I am loving. I am fabulous. I am beautiful. I am saved. I am a victor. I am faithful. I am devout. I am accepted. I am a Christian. I am MCC. Yes, and I am MCC. I am MCC. I am MCC. And I am MCC. 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 Our scripture reading is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 9, verse 35 to the end of the chapter, verse 38. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, this is the gospel for our salvation. So the last installment is proclaim. Proclaim. So our gospel reading for today, I'm, I'm interpreting this. The past, three sun, uh, the past two Sundays na nag-preach ako, hindi ako nag-interpret ng scripture. Today I'll be interpreting scripture. Uh, so our passage today is in verse 9. The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Very MCC. So, as narinig natin, no, Jesus went all to the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the good news. So, you want to resist in, in relation to uh, Pride Month, to the Pride March, resist together, <coughs> proclaim. Ano ba Tagalog ng proclaim? Hindi ko alam. Ha? Deklara. Deklara, proklama. Pahayag. Pagpapahay pagpapahayag. O, tama, pagpapahayag. So in our gospel today, Jesus is said to have went out, pumunta sa lahat ng mga uh, barangay, sa lahat ng mga... sa lahat ng mga cities and towns and villages proclaiming the good news and the good news is the kingdom of God now depende yan kung kung kay Mark ka the first gospel it's the kingdom of God kung kay Matthew ka it's the kingdom of heaven si Mat meron ding ano eh Meron ding nuances yan si Matthew kung bakit niya ginagamit ang kingdom of heaven versus kingdom of God. Okay? So he proclaimed. And while he is proclaiming, he healed people of the ailments and diseases that they have, including, including possessions, demonic possessions. Mapapansin natin na pag... So, yung, yung chapter 9 ng Gospel of Matthew, before this particular ba passage na binasa natin uh, about the harvest and the laborers are few, bago yun, the, the previous verses talks about uh, talks about a woman who is restored and healed. Yung humawak sa, sa manggas ng damit ni Jesus tapos tumigil ang kanyang pagdurugo. Tapos before this passage, uh, Jesus heals two blind men. May pinagaling siyang dalawang lalaking bulag. And then the, ver the, the verses right before this passage na binasa natin, may pinagaling si Jesus na pipit bingi. Mute. Actually, pipe, pero most likely, uh, bingi din yun. 
And then before that, merong healing of the paralytic. Uh, and then be right before chapter 9 is yung, uh, yung possession. The possession, the gathering demoniacs. Yung pumunta yung mga baboy sa sa sa, la, sa lawa at nalunod, ba? So Jesus healed people and before this passage that we hear uh, that we read today puro healing puro healing and my intention yan yung writer there is an intention why the writer uh, wrote in this way and then finally wrote about Jesus going to the cities proclaiming the good news and curing every disease And then right after, right after sa binasa natin, sa chapter 10 naman, yung the 12 apostles being sent out two by two to do what Jesus just did. No? Sila naman yung pinadala niya. Pagoda na si ate mo. Kailangan magpahinga at magdasal. Sila naman, ang mga becks naman ang pinadala upang dalawa, two by two, at magpagaling at magproclaim ng ng mabuting balita. Yun yung after this this passage natin today. Many of the followers of Jesus, marami sa mga tagasunod ni Jesus before and after siya ipako sa krus, ay hindi lang naman yung 12 apostles or the other disciples. Many of the followers of Jesus were also the very people na pinagaling niya. The very people who got cured, who got healed, who got uh, exorcised of their demonic possession were the ones that were uh, also the followers of Jesus. After sila pinagaling, sila ay naging tagasunod ni Jesus. People who were seeking Jesus were not only sick. Now, yung mga naghahanap kay Jesus, hindi lang sila may sakit ng katawan. But many of them were also sick in spirit. Weighed down and exploited economically and religiously, politically and culturally. Kaya sa binasa nating passage, kung hindi nyo napansin kanina, sabi dito, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them. He had meron siya nagkaroon siya ng habag. Pero maling translation yung habag eh. He had compassion for them because they were ano yung word? They were harassed and helpless like sheep without shepherd. So the many people who looked for Jesus and the many people who followed Jesus were not only sick in body but were also sick in spirit, were also sick in, in mind because they were exploited by, uh, they were exploited economically, religiously, politically, and culturally. They were oppressed. They were marginalized. Many of them found healing and hope. Not only in the, hindi lang sa pag-touch ni Jesus, Many of them got many of them found healing and hope not only in the in not only in the miraculous touch of Jesus but also by the words that he spoke to them. Kaya palaging magkasama teaching and healing. Sometimes the healing is what is already a teaching in itself that transforms the life of of people. Sometimes the teaching is the one, kasi hindi naman physically may sakit. Pero the teaching of Jesus becomes a form of healing to the spirit. A form of healing to the heart and to the mind. <coughs> Many of them were not only bleeding physically like the woman, but also bleeding from the oppression of both the temple and of the Roman Empire. Many of them were not only dead, 
or dying like the little girl. Meron din kasing kwento yung si Tabitha ba yun? Tama ba? Si Tabitha? The little girl who died who died and was resurrected by Jesus. Diba yung story na papunta si Jesus dun kay Tabitha. Tabitha ba yung name niya? Basta papunta si Jesus dun and then uh, bago siya makarating dun, yun yung paghawak nung nung babae na nagdud nagdurugo as gumaling siya by simply touching the the ano to manggas ng damit ni Jesus. Now nung nakarating na siya doon sa bahay nung nung little girl, andun yung parents, sabi nung ibang nandoon, wag na po kayong dumiretso kasi patay na po yung bata. Pero sabi ni Jesus, ah uh, wag kayong magalala natutulog lang siya. Mas parang nagtawanan yung mga yung mga tao. Hindi patay na siya, ano sinasabi mong tulog lang? And then Jesus brought her back to life. So many were bleeding not only like the woman, but they were being bled dry by the taxes of the empire and of the temple. Many were dying and dead, not only like the little child, but were dying like the people in Negros. Like the people in Mindanao right now. In some parts of Mindanao. Many of those people were not only blind physically like the two men. They were also blinded by the power and wealth that they aspired for as told by empire. Many of them, marami sa kanila, were not only liberated through the exorcism of Jesus. Hindi lang sila na liberate from the evil spirits, but also from the evil of the human heart. Like the man freed from legion, tulad nung lalaking pinagaling ni Jesus at pinalaya mula sa legion of evil spirits, in the proclamation of Jesus, in the proclamation of Jesus, there is something that helps us to heal that helps us to be liberated when we proclaim. When we hear a proclamation and when we in turn proclaim to others. At tulad nung lalaking in exercise ni Jesus, ang sabi ni Jesus sa kanya, pag, pagkatapos siyang pagalingin, tell the people what God has done in your life. So like Jesus, many of them went here and there beyond Galilee. Wait, wait. Balik ako. Okay, backtrack ako. Sorry. So, Jesus told the person na napagaling niya, na, na napossess nung legion, tell your story. Tell what God has done in your life. Tell them. And then, in some places, alam din natin to, in some places, in some situations, yung mga pinagaling ni Jesus, sinasabihan niya naman na, shh, don't tell anyone. And yet, matigas ang ulo, mga sinabihan niyang don't tell anyone, they tell everyone that they got healed because of Jesus. There was an extraordinary healing through Jesus. Because the most powerful and the most persuasive proclamation has always been the proclamation of a testimony. Kaya sa mga evangelical churches, meron talagang portion ng pagpapatotoo, ng testimony. May Sundays, 
in that may mga Sundays or certain worship ang ang mga evangelical churches where uh, bukod sa pagsisermon ni pastor, merong isa, dalawa o pamilya na mag papatotoo, magpapat magte-testify on how God has worked in their lives. Ulitin ko, the most powerful and most persuasive proclamation has always been the proclamation of a testimony. The first followers of Jesus, those who were with him, who witnessed him and experienced him, proclaimed through testimony. Nakita namin. Nahawakan namin siya. Narinig namin sa sarili naming mga tenga Naranasan namin siya at willing kaming mamatay sa bagay na aming naranasan. Kaya hanggang ngayon may dispute pa rin whether Jesus really rose from the dead or not. Because, or kasi may mga ibang nagkiklaim, hindi naman ta- si Jesus ay hindi historical, walang Jesus na nabuhay. Some would, would argue that, especially among, among very radical atheists. Um, pero scholars have said one of the reasons why we believe of the historical Jesus because the first Christians will not die for something that they invented. They will not, they are not willing to die the most horrible death if it was a lie that they invented. And they were willing to die for their testimony. Willing silang mamatay. And they did. Namatay sila. Namatay sila. Many of them, after the crucifixion of Jesus, many of them went here and there, tulad ni Jesus. Pumunta sila beyond Galilee, sa mga cities and towns and villages and the large metropolitan cities like Corinth or the capital in Rome, in Ephesus. They went out even as far as beyond the Roman Empire. Ang alam lang natin Christian history yung ano eh, nasa Roman Empire. Pero there were Christians who went to Persia and as far as India. One of the most ancient Christian churches are found in South India. And the, the, the myth or the tradition is that St. Thomas the Doubter ang nagpunta sa, sa India. They went here and there. And when they went to the cities and towns, they testified. They testified to the story of Christ and to the story of Christ in their life and in their community. And so, for the first 300 years, sa unang tatlong daang taon ng Kristyanismo, many of the followers of Jesus were crucified, burned, burned alive, tortured, beheaded. Ngayon, kung ikaw ay, ikaw ay privileged dahil Roman citizen ka, Imbis na pahirapan ka, pupugutan ka ng ulo. Privilege yun, ha? Na-discuss ko na before. It is a privilege. Kasi hindi mo na kailangan maghirap. Okay? The worst kind of death is crucifixion. Or, si Nero, naka siya ng mas worse. You will be crucified and then you will be set on fire. So that you will be the lamp, the la- kasi wala namang kuryente nun, di ba? You will be the lamp light in uh, in the streets of Rome and they were fed to the wild animals in the Colosseum because of their unwavering proclamation and testimony and even unto death even pinapatay na sila at sila ay nasusunog habang nakapako sa krus they were singing hymns they were shouting sa sakit, but at the same time, they were trying to sing hymns, songs of praise to Jesus Christ and to God. 
even as they were being fed to animals, they were singing and praying while natatanggal ang kamay, natatanggal ang paa. And these are all recorded. All of these uh, testimonies about the first Christian martyrs. What has, what has God done in your life so far? Sa inyo, 2,000 years after, in Mandaluyong City or in Metro Manila, in the Philippines, as an LGBTQ person of faith, what has God, ano bang ginawa na ng Diyos sa inyong buhay, sa iyong buhay so far? Have you ever experienced God? Was there someone that you can consider, meron bang isang tao o grupo ng mga tao that you can consider as the, the hands and feet of Jesus in your life, offering you help? Nung nag-come out ka as LGBT, sa mga nag-come out na, o sa mga semi-out, <laughs> how was that? How has that been? Was it liberating? Or continues to be a struggle? Or both? Sa MCC, some of our theologians have said, uh, particularly Mona West, how Elder Mona, Mona West, said that coming out in MCC is a sacrament. To come out is to experience the grace of God. Have you come out? And have you experienced God in coming out? How has God reached out to you through the many people and situations that happened in your life? Were you able, were you able to meet Christ? Inyo na bang na-meet si Jesus? Ang Jesus na pumupunta sa mga bayan-bayan, healing people, both by the touch of the hand and by the power of stories, the power of his parables. I am sure one way or another, whether good or bad, in struggle or in celebration, I hope, I hope, at kung di nyo pa napag-iisipan, pag-iisipan nyo ngayon, Christ has manifested himself to you through the people that you have met, in, the, the people that you have in your lives, and the people that you have met along your journey. Therefore, it is now your turn. Ito naman ay inyo ng turn. It is now your turn to proclaim and testify. It is now time for you to tell your story. The story of God, of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit that is present in your life. Kasi ganun din yung mga first followers. They did not only tell the story of Jesus, they told the story of Jesus that was in their life, in their present life, in their present reality, in their community. So it is not enough that we experience God or to meet Jesus. The next step is then for you to be the one to tell the story. To tell the Jesus story and to tell your story. The Jesus story in your life. Tell. Tell of your brokenness. Tell of your fears and of your doubts. Speak the many times that you have fallen. Ang gusto natin palagi i-project, palagi tayong maganda. 
at hindi nagkakamali. At palaging kailangan successful ako. Perfect. Perfect. Diba? Or that perfect kaming magjowa. Nakikita akong ganyan eh. Uh, Oo, may nakita. May, meron akong isang kilala. Gra- uh, in-unfollow ko na nga. <laughs> Mega, super duper to the max na umay to the le- ibang level ng umay na uh, I love you, bebe ko. Nga ganun-ganun. No? Hindi ka to, Kuya Mike, ha? <laughs> Hindi ka to. Ibang, iba to. Wala ka pa na wala ka pa naman sa ganung level. Wala pa sa umay level. Uh, wala pa sa umay level. Andag dito. Sa kanya hindi na nag hindi masyado nagpo si Kuya Mike. So I I I I know this 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 couple, yung actually isa sa kanila, isa lang sa kanila na ibang level talaga ang araw-araw na pagpo-post ng ano ng ng kasweet na kasweetan. And then a few months ago, nag-message sa akin. Pwede po bang magpa-counseling pasto? <laughs> Hindi rin kayo to, okay? Wala naman kayong mga ganung post, eh. So, it is okay to tell your brokenness. It is okay to tell how fallen you are. Pero, wag din extreme. <laughs> Meron din kasi yung, ano eh, yung, yung super extreme umay positive. Meron din naman yung super extreme na... Uh, nega to the max, parang siya, siya na ang sumalo ng lahat ng sugpa ng mundo, di ba? So, hindi yun ang, hindi yung dalawang extreme na yon ang sinasabi ko, okay? But tell your story. The good and the bad. And try to see, try to reflect was God in this, in my story? Can Jesus be expressed in the story of my life? Proclaim. Tell your story. Tell your doubts. Testify the many times that there were other people who helped you, who were Emmanuel to you, the presence of God in your life. Sino yung mga taong yon? Proclaim and testify your coming out story kahit gaano ka pa ulit-ulit. Minsan nakakapagod na. Ako napapagod na ako pa ulit-ulit sabi, I'm a gay pastor. I'm a gay pastor. But you have to tell it again and again. Your coming out story. The liberating power of your coming out. Proclaim and testify the same way that Christian martyrs did. And I hope you're willing to die for your testimony. Pero hindi lang story mo. Proclaim and testify also the stories of other people who are voiceless. Sabi ko nga, hindi lang parating sa'yo ang spotlight or sa akin. Tell the story of those who cannot tell their stories. Tell. Tell of their struggles. Proclaim of their struggles. Proclaim of their activism. Of their conviction to fight for justice and dignity. Sa mga mulat na sa atin. Sa mga consider natin na awoke. Woke na. Tell the story. Tell the story of the Lumads. So some of us in MCC have been with the Lumad people. Tell their story. To those who have witnessed or continue to witness the struggle of people living with HIV and AIDS, especially those in the hospitals, Tell their story. Tell their struggles. Pero wag nyong, wag nyong i-out. Hindi yun yung ibig ko sabihin. Wag nyo rin sabihin yung status without permission. Okay? That's not what I'm trying to say. 
And particularly to those who were able to visit Choi in the hospital and who knows his story. To those who went to him the last weeks and the last days of his life. Proclaim and tell his story and story, many stories like his. Proclaim and testify Jesus who was present in their struggles and the struggles of many sectors. Jesus proclaimed and testified God's inclusive love. Yan ang ginawa ni Jesus. One of the many things he did. He proclaimed and testified to God's inclusive love. And this was an act of active resistance and rebellion against temple and empire. The early Christians for 300 years resisted continuously proclaiming and testifying about Jesus and they also got killed in the most horrible of ways. 2,000 years after, we are a marginalized, small, queer tribe of queer Christians, LGBT Christians. We are followers of Jesus. We are the followers who are as queer and as rebellious as the one that we follow. Therefore, we are called to also testify and proclaim. So some of us may die proclaiming. I think wala naman siguro, no? Wala naman mamatay sa atin. <laughs> Just by saying your coming out story. But even if some of us may die proclaiming, and many already did, especially in MCC, yung mga unang leaders ng MCC, prior to Orlando shooting, the largest murder of LGBT, was, prior to that, Orlando, was the New Orleans fire. Nung nung yung isang gay bar inuman inuman bar na nasa second floor yata second floor ba yung third floor second floor bago magbukas siya as bar sa gabi it is an MCC doon nagwo-worship yung MCC New Orleans this was i don't know 80s or 70s was early very early 70s no very early. May documentary na ito. Hindi ko alam kung available na siya. Kung meron na sa YouTube, yung fire? New Orleans fire? Um, and many of those who burned, sa hindi pa nakakaalam, siyempre alam na ito ng mga matagal na sa MCC. Many of those who burned were MCC worshippers. The pastor, trying to escape through the window, yung window na tinataas na ganyan na stuck siya doon so the people with the people outside witness the pastor burning at the window the associate pastor already came out pero hindi niya mahanap yung partner niya so bumalik siya sa loob at nung tapos na yung apoy nakita silang magkayakap sa isang corner sunog Thirty-two people died that night, and most of the funeral parlors and most of the churches surrounding New Orleans did not want to receive the bodies. Did not want to do funeral for them. Uh, there was the Methodist Church one, and then the Episcopal Church who received. Uh, to, who agreed to, well, the Methodist Church, I forgot wh which Methodist Church, dun sa New Orleans, for one week nakapag-hold, or ilang days, basta, X number of days nakapag-funeral doon, pero yung bishop nung Methodist Church, parang nagalit yata. So, they had to find another place, uh, I think ang nag ba Episcopal Church. Ah, uh, I might be wrong on the details, kabaliktaran or but that was the story. 
and they were burned because they were LGBT and they were LGBT Christians. Proclaiming, proclaiming the good news, the love of God to a place that was very racist and homophobic. And they paid their lives testifying to God's love. So, so they, last na, tapos na ang sermon. Ayan, last line na. Isa ko pang kwento about MCC. Nagkaroon din ng bomb threat, general conference ng MCC. At may meeting yung mga pastor, mga clergy, nung nareceive ni Troy Perry yung uh, bomb threat. So, general conference, Ang ginawa ni Troy Perry, punta siya dun sa kung saan magmi-meeting yung mga pastor. Okay, we will pray to start this meeting. But can you please look under your chairs and see if there is anything unusual in in the in in the ano? So it's it's been a joke in in MCC for for quite some time. Ganong ka-casual nung yung sinabi ni ano. At ang sabi ni Troy Perry, if we are to die, testifying and doing the work that we do, we die. But they will not stop us. They will not drive us away. The first church of MCC, the very first church property, was also burned down. The first church property na the kwento ay bumili ng malaking drum si, si Troy Perry no isang Sunday because they need to raise $10,000 to purchase the, the, the first church church property na ayun, parang simbahan and the people who were attending the church put their diamonds their uh, relo dollars to raise the 10,000 and then in a matter of, of a year or so <coughs> sinunog the first church the first ever church property So, they may destroy our bodies, they may, they may destroy our churches, but we will never lose our voice. We will never lose our story. So, tell the story even unto death. Sing the story of Christ found in your life and in, in the communities that you belong. For we know that we never truly die. We never truly die. Joy is never truly gone. He and others like him lives on when we proclaim Christ in their story and in our story. We are an Easter people. We are the children. If you are a follower of Jesus, you are a child of the resurrection. There is that promise of the resurrection. And we will proclaim, we will sing, we will testify beyond the tomb and the grave. To every town and every city, we shall proclaim God loves all. Jesus calls you. Jesus sends you to heal the world with our story, with your story. Therefore, come. Come. Let us proclaim the story together in the name of the one whose story is our story, Jesus the Christ. Amen.